Chris Parker, Cleveland scene. Kyrie, they uh, they blitzed you a lot in the early first half. Uh, obviously, Coach Blue made an adjustment. Could you talk about the challenge that posed and what you needed to do to challenge that? <clears throat> well, uh, coming on the initial uh, jump ball and first possession that we have, we have a play that we're going to run. Then I see that they're blitzing me, and I'm coming to the bench and <laughs> kind of looking for answers for myself because they were up by a certain amount of points, and they took me out of a, a rhythm that I'm usually in coming into games, especially in the first half. But my teammates did an incredible job, especially these guys to the right of me are just having that focus and knowing what's important when and what's the task at hand and what we had to accomplish, especially to finish the basketball game and just exuding a lot of confidence in me going into that fourth quarter and, um, you know, chanting as well. Um, it's just when you have those type of teammates and, uh, and type of pieces where we can still have a, uh, we're kind of in a bind, we're six, we're six points down, eight points down and game's not necessarily pretty. Um, you know, we just have a lot of resilient guys, so they believe in me, and I'm glad we got this win. LeBron, Dave McMenamin, ESPN. Uh, in the front. Uh, you guys are down six starting the fourth quarter, and you're on the bench. What's it like for you to see Channing and Kyrie kind of take the game over at that point? Uh, well, like I said, they, uh, you know, they carried us, and they brought it home for us. And, um, you know, Simon just got to my right. Um, that's what we brought him here for. You know, to, you know, sometimes he feels himself that he, you know, even when he's open, he wants to keep the ball moving. But, you know, we brought him here to shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot. And tonight he did exactly that. Uh, he gave us a huge boost. I mean, obviously he was the, the game ball for our team. And, you know, I just tried to stay on Kyrie throughout the whole game. And, you know, in the middle of the third, I told him, listen, I don't care what happened, you know, up to this point, just hit the reset button. Just hit the reset button because uh, at the end of the day, we need everything uh, from you and we need you to lead us. And, you know, from that point on, from you know, like the four-minute mark in the third quarter to all the way to the fourth, uh, he just did what Kyrie does. And, uh, he hit big shots for us. Um, when he felt like the defense was starting to react because he hit a couple of shots, I remember him throwing back to Channing and, and hitting a three and making him call timeout. So these two guys definitely carried us tonight, and uh, uh, it was special. Marla, right now, our Akron Beacon Journal. Channing, I was just curious what was going through your mind. Did, did you feel like your team needed you or – and, you know <laughs> – was this the kind of night you envisioned when you came here? You know, every night I um, I just know I have to go out there and do my job. And I played behind two pretty good guys and Kevin and LeBron and, um, well, three guys and Tristan. So, you know, tonight, every night is going to be different. I just got to be a pro, you know, um, and be ready. And, uh, you know, James Jones was like, Chenny, you got to stop passing. You're not very good. You just got to shoot it. So I said, all right, that makes it simple. So I was just trying to be aggressive. You know, when they put two people on the ball, um, you know, in the first half, I kind of saw they're going to full rotate to me, and they did, and there was some space. And, you know, I kind of figured I'm seven foot, so I'm not going to block it. So I just shot it. And, um, you know, to be kind of serious, you know, when I got traded here, um, I knew there was a responsibility to come at the level that these guys are playing. And Scott Skiles told me, hey, Channing, man, you're, you're a great player, and you're going to help them win a game in a series, you know? You're going to help them win a game and, and go to the, you know, do some bigger things. And, you know, I always think about that. So I'm always got to stay ready. Um, whether I play five minutes, 20 minutes, um, I, I'm out there diving on the floor and trying to do everything I can to help us win. So sometimes it's not going to be in the stat sheet. Sometimes teams are going to stay attached to me. And tonight they didn't. I got to hit some shots. Last question was LeBron and Kyrie. Um, when the coach takes over midseason, you never know what to expect. But um, what has Teron Lue done to help maybe unify this group? And how unified would you say this team is compared to the other time of the year? Uh, just keeps us even killed. You know, we come to the bench. You know, no matter where up, we're down. Just tell us to stay in the moment. You know, um, you know just like tonight, you know, the game did not look good for us at certain points of the game. We just continue to stay on the same. You know, let's worry about the next possession. You know, we're gonna win this game. You know, stick with the game plan, and uh, you know, let's play our game. And uh, you know, he, he never gets too high, never gets too low. And, you know, for us as a group, because we're out on the floor and we're, we're competing as hard as we can, and sometimes. You lose sight of what the main thing is at times for us players. He comes when you come to the bench and have someone that can calm things down. Um, as our head coaches, it's, it's great for us as, as the players. Back over to Joe. Oh, I'll keep it quick. Uh, I, I just think the uh, the demand of, of leadership coming from uh, from T. Lou extending down to me and Brian and Kevin. But it's just constant, constant, no matter if it's shoot around or uh, film or out there on the floor, he's going to command a lot of it. He's going to demand 
that we take over the game and we control the game. Um, and that's what I love. It's just being ha having that ability to be able to be coached for 48 minutes, up, down, doesn't really matter. He's going to look me in my eyes. He's going to tell me straight what I need to be doing out there, defensively and offensively. And it puts me in. And I never waver from what's going on. Um, never waver from the game plan or anything like that. And I think it carries all the way down to the 15th guy because uh, we we echo what he wants from us and we echo it to the team. And it's it's easy to communicate when you have a coach like that. Uh, for Kyrie and, and LeBron, um, I know there's obviously there's a long way to go. Um, you're, the, the sample size is still relatively small, but when you two and Kevin are on the floor together in the playoffs, you've never lost. 11 and 0. Um, what do you take from that, both of you? Uh, that our teammates uh, they did their job and they helped and they helped us in 